So, uh, yeah, thank you guys all so much for being here. My name is Jason Kretzky. I obviously work here at TrendSpider, um, and it's a pleasure to get to hang out with you guys today. Um, I want to talk, before we get into the presentation, I want to take like one minute and talk about what we do as traders every day, right? There are kind of four big things that we do all day, every day. The main thing, the first thing is our on-chart analysis. We're, uh, we're looking at our indicators, we're drawing trend lines, we're, we're analyzing the price action on the charts. Um, maybe we're in a trade when we do this, maybe we're not. If we're not, we're maybe setting alerts off of conditions that we want to trade in the future, right? We're, or we're scanning for opportunities. We're looking for our favorite setups. We may be looking for technical or fundamental conditions or maybe a mix of both. Um, and in the best case scenario, we have also tested our ideas, right? We've strategy tested our ideas to make sure that they actually do work. Now, to do all of those things, you might use a few different tools, right? Some of you are probably TradingView users. You might all be TradingView users. You use that for your charts. Maybe you have Finviz or Trade Ideas for your scanner, maybe WhaleStream or Market Chameleon for your options chain info. You might even subscribe to a professional trader's Discord or an email list uh, for specific trade ideas and so on. So here at TrendSpider, we see that process of going here information and there for that information as a bit counterintuitive, right? It's a little bit of a time suck constantly being pulled away from your charts. So what we've, uh, what we've built here and what we continue to iterate on is a tool that lets you do all of this in one place. Um, excuse me. So uh, let's go through the basics of the tool and I'm going to start on the idea of on chart analysis. Now, one of the biggest detriments to a trader or that a trader can bring to their analysis, and we've all done this, I'm as guilty of it as anybody, is bias, right? Bias is important in the sense that you need to have some sort of conviction for each trade that you make, but it can also make you see what you want to see and not what actually is. So the first set of tools that I want to, want to introduce to you guys, and some of y'all may be familiar with these tools, some of you may not, it's these buttons up here. These are, our, these are called our auto analysis tools. So we have auto fib functionality. This is gonna automatically draw a fib sequence across the most recently completed move. And all these auto analysis tools, they're all going to work the same way as you switch timeframes. They are going to update per the time frame that you're looking at. Um, so that's auto fibs. We offer auto trends. So this automatically draws trend lines based off, again, your, um, your, the time frame that you're looking at. There are a ton of settings here. I'm not going to go into specific detail about all the settings, but just know that there are different ways that you can impact what is drawn. We can talk about it at the end. I'm happy to do answer any questions that you guys have at the end. We have, of course, a huge suite of indicators. We won't worry about that too much. We can automatically identify a ton of different candlestick patterns, the strap patterns, and all of the patterns that you've come to know. Um, you can automatically identify them on the platform. Just select the ones that you want to identify, say apply, and it's going to do that for you. And this identification is just one piece of what uh, the tool does by being able to identify these patterns, you can then utilize them across the platform, whether it's in the scanner or the strategy tester or your alerts. Um, but again, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Just know that that's possible. We can automatically identify chart patterns, everything from broadening patterns to uh, channels, ascending, descending, horizontal, double bottoms, double tops, head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders, triangles, wedges, all of the above. I'm going to zoom out here so you can kind of see all the different patterns that it's identifying a little double bottom here, a double top here, a channel here, a broadening uh, wedge here. And again, this identification allows for you to use these patterns elsewhere. If you want to scan for all of the best falling wedge setups, uh, falling wedge breakout. Michael, you got a crazy. Right. Feedback going on. There we go. Okay, great. Um, we've got heat maps. There are a few different types of heat maps, but heat maps in essence are going to automatically identify horizontal levels of support and resistance based off of previous consolidation. Um, and again, there are a couple of different types here. My favorite happens to be horizontal, so that's what I utilize. On this other data button, this is kind of not so much auto analysis, but this is getting into more the fundamental stuff. 
You've got analyst estimates that you could see on the chart. You've got dividend dates and earnings dates that you can see on the chart. You can add Federal Reserve economic data charts or uh, uh, Federal Reserve economic data to your charts via a lower indicator. Kind of hard to see that data on anything other than about a weekly time frame. So you would want to go to a weekly for that, but it's there. Um, and uh, what else do we have? Market breadth data, mentions on Wall Street bets, short volume splits, retail traders activity percentage, tons of stuff here. Again, I don't want to get too in the weeds. I just want you to know that it is all there for you. Um, and then finally, uh, well, not finally, um, but the last tool up here is this multi time frame analysis. So, multi time frame analysis allows us to see our indicators, our trend lines, our chart patterns on two time frames at once. So I just have one simple moving average here. It's a 15 minute version of that simple moving average. And then I've added an additional time frame. It's that same moving average, but on the daily time frame here. And uh, and yeah, that's available as well. So once you've done your on chart analysis, you found the trend lines that you like, you found the indicators that you want to use, you found the fib levels that you're interested in, whatever, you may then want to add an additional layer of more fundamental analysis. And that's where these widgets come into play. So of course we have our watch lists. Within your watch lists, you can create your own unique lists. We have about 700 custom watch lists, all kinds of different things that we've built out for you from, from uh, you know top traded names on Wall Street bets to just all kinds of different things that we that we have pre-built, but of course you can make your own. You've got your alerts widget here, so you can kind of see all of the alerts that you have set up at any given time. You've got a news widget that's gonna allow you to just see news snippets on whatever name you happen to be trading. Analyst estimates that will, again, show you kind of a historical reference of all of the analysts that perhaps you might be interested in if, if you're interested in that sort of stuff. We've got seasonality data, tons of seasonality data this, this chart is quite popular amongst our traders on TrendSpider. Um, you can filter seasonality in a ton of ways. You can filter by month, by week, by day, by hour of the day. You can filter by the common, the most common seasonality type is just percentage change. So does the candle close green or does it close red? And how often does it do that? On Apple, we can see September's they perform really poorly over the past 43 years. Only 33% of the time, Apple closes green in September. However, October, 70% of the time. So like, this is a very quick way to visualize alpha, right? You know September is generally pretty a, poor, a pretty poor month for Apple. You know October is generally a pretty good month for Apple. We can include mean change here so we can see that on average, you're losing 4.32% uh, on Apple over the past 43 years in September, on average, you're gaining 6.38. So buying in September, selling in October, that's the type of uh, understanding that we can very quickly glean from a chart like this. But you can break this down in all kinds of different ways. You can break it down by volume, relative volume, um, above average, and 2x above average. You can break it down by how much time is spent above or below these RSI levels, this money flow index levels. Um, above or below these important simple moving averages. Lots of ways that you can utilize seasonality to aid in your analysis. Um, of course, uh, a little tab for making notes if you want to create notes. We've got an insider trading um, data here, which is going to give you a up-to-date list of all of the latest insider trades. Let me zoom out so you can kind of see that a little bit. Um, we've got this thing called a smart checklist. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. We've got unusual options data. This is the most recent, the 250 most recent unusual options orders. You can filter this by expiration date. You can filter it by premium. You can filter it by strike. And this is, again, is just a very quick and easy, you can glance at this and say, you know, do I see more green? Is there more calls going on? Is there more puts going on in the market? Um, I always like to filter kind of, kind of by more closer to in the money stuff. This out of the money stuff just doesn't really interest me too much. And then I like to filter kind of by more uh, ex like closer expiries and larger premiums. Um, it's kind of where my head's at. I want to see kind of the bigger stuff that's trading closer to the money that's going to be expiring sooner. But filter it however you want, play around with play around with it. You know, there are people that pay lots of money for just this data 
just that, just a tool that provides them with just this data. And this just comes as part of your TrendSpider account. Um, and then down here, some additional things, bots, we'll talk about bots in a little bit and we'll, we'll maybe get around to these, but we might have to leave those off for now. So once you've done your analysis, whatever it is, the next step in my personal opinion is strategy testing. You want to know that your idea has merit. And this is a really, really huge tool. It's an important tool, and it might be just a little bit scary for some people. So I want to spend like a little bit of extra time on this and talk you through how to think about building out a strategy and using the tools contained within the strategy tester to help you build out your strategy. Because there are lots of tools within it that can help you hone and, and fix if your strategy isn't working, it can help you fix that strategy. It's gonna show you a lot of stuff. So let's talk through it. Like here at TrendSpider, one of my roles is to create content. Uh, I create strategy ideas. I create scanner ideas. We share them with our traders in our Discord. Like I just shared a, a handful of strategies just the other day, some strategies that work quite well. Just to give them ideas and, and you know help push the ideas along. Um, so let's talk about building a strategy. You can use all kinds of different things when you're building your strategy. You can use price conditions, indicator conditions, candlestick pattern conditions. You can define when earnings or dividends or splits are. You can define things about analyst estimates. Um, but I'm going to keep it really simple. I am a price action trader. I don't use too many indicators. And I really only trade futures. I don't really trade anything other than ES futures. So for me, creating a strategy is actually kind of difficult because I don't use a lot of the tools that many traders use. So when I'm tasked with building strategies, it's particularly stressful. So my first goal as a builder of strategies is to create a simple strategy. So my first thought when I was tasked to build a strategy for Apple, they had earnings a couple of weeks ago. So I shared, I wanted to make something for Apple. So my first idea was, well, let's use a moving average. Everybody knows moving averages. I know moving averages. Let's find a moving average that Apple seems to uh, respect. Doesn't have to be one that everybody uses, an eight or a 21 or a 50 or a 200. I just need to find a length that price tends to spend a long time below and a long time above. And what I did, I just started playing around with my one single simple moving average indicator here. And I stumbled across the 115. And I was on the 15 minute. I wanted something that kind of was like maybe a scalper intraday. And I stumbled across the 115. And this is what I noticed. Like it spends decent periods of time, well, like trading consistently below and trading consistently above. And so I thought, well, let's start there. And let's say I'm a long bias trader. So let's say I want to go long when price is above the 115. And I want to get out of that long bias trade when price is below it. So I come over here to my entry conditions. The, the strategy tester has two sides, your entry and your exit. So I come to my entry and I can script this one of two ways. I can script it manually or I can utilize GPT. So I'm utilizing AI to build the conditions. There's a couple of places on the platform where AI is now, you can start using AI to do things around the platform. We'll talk about this one first. So I click add a GPT condition and I just say price greater than SMA 115, and I say apply. So GPT knows what this is, and it automatically scripts that condition for me. Price greater than 115 SMA, right? Well, that's my entry. Like I said, I'm doing this very, very simply. Um, so this is my entry, and I'm going to do an exit. And obviously, if I'm going to go long when price closes above, I want to get out when price closes below. So I'm going to say price less than SMA 115 and say apply. Very, very simple. Again, it knows what I'm trying to do and it automatically scripts it for me. I need to choose my direction. I want to be long. I need to choose when I want to get into the trade. I want to get into it on the open. And then I need to define how long I'm going to be in this trade. And just generally speaking, I'm always going to utilize a bigger data set. The bigger the data set, the more data I have, the more proof I have that the strategy actually can work. So I use the 7,000 candle option and it runs the test for me. And I get this data back. Um, and the first thing that I do is I open my performance chart. And the reason why I do this is because I want to see 
I want to see what the strategy does, and I want to see what it does actually within the asset. So you have this blue line. This is your equity curve. So this is your strategy, the results of your strategy. You have this colorful line, this Christmas red and green and white line. This is the asset itself. Anywhere that it's green, I'm in a long trade that actually turns into a profit. And anywhere that's red, I'm in a long trade that ultimately turns into a loss. Anywhere that's white, I'm not in a trade at all. So I can see very quickly that this strategy tends to avoid big drawdowns. That's nice to see. I like that. It tends to ride trends. It actually will stay in the trade long enough to take advantage of the trend. It beats buy and hold over the same period of time by just a few percentage, 31.6 on the strategy versus 27.2 for the asset. And then I come over to this section of the chart. So I'm just clicking and dragging to zoom in on this section of the chart. And this section of the chart is where I start thinking about how can I make the strategy better? And the reason why this is the section of the chart that I choose is because I have these areas that are red. So these are trades that went wrong. Essentially, I, I lost money on these trades, but they started out so good. I caught it mid-trend, but there was a profit here that I missed. 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 Sometimes I get into trade and just trades and it immediately goes against me, right? But here and here and here and here and here, these are all chances to make money that I didn't make. And why didn't I make it? Well, it's because of my exit criteria. It's because something with my exit is off. So I go back to my chart and I look at what's going on on my chart here. Where are my entries and exits and what's happening? And you know, this you would expect to see if price chops around a moving average and your entry is on the close above that moving average and your, your exits on the close below it. Yeah. You're going to get chopped up. That's why I always say, or that's why I said at the top, like I'm looking for periods where it's long periods above or below. And then I notice this entry right here. And so this entry kind of gives me a little bit of pause. I really want to avoid things like this because this is just annoying to me. You get into a trade, you immediately get out of the trade because price just never gave, you know, it just never held above that line. It just barely broke above it and failed. So my first thought is, well, I want to try and mitigate that problem. Well, how can I mitigate that problem? My first thought, again, we're trying to be as simple as possible here. The first thought is, well, what if I said I want multiple closes above that trend line or above that moving average? I've only got one close above it. Maybe I need to add a second close above it. So let's do that. So I click this button right here. It duplicates the condition. And then I just redefine the candle that I'm referring to and say one candle ago. So one candle ago, price closed above the 115. And on the current candle, it closed above the 115. I'm keeping the exit the exact same. I rerun the test. It's all about trial and error here. So it's just like adding little things and, and slowly building up the, the results. So now we've increased the results of this strategy by 5%. We've added an additional 5%. I see over here, we still have some issues. We're still in these trades that ultimately fail. That's annoying. How can I fix it? Well, I go over to my Price Behavior Explorer, and I'm going to just explain kind of one or two tools in here. There are a handful of tools that you can uh, mess around with, but I'm going to show you guys this. This is 96% of winners. So this cloud that we're looking at, this is the track of 96% of my winning trades. It tells, me, um, it tells me how far my winners tend to draw down before becoming winners, and it tells me how far they extend before failing, before ultimately failing. This is a very healthy looking curve. It's, it's, it's up and to the right for the most part. Some of these look like bell curves where you have this big, you know, clearly this, the, 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 the strategy performs really well and then it starts failing really poorly. So what do I glean from this? Well, the first thing that I see over here, this little teeny little section, it's, it's very small because this strategy tends to not fail, right? You may not always have a, a great winning trade, but those winners don't draw down very much before becoming winners. It looks like they draw down about 0.3% before becoming winners. Now on the upside, the best that 96% of my winners do is a gain of 8.33%, but not many trades make it there. We can see that by looking at the number of winning positions. This graph slowly ticks down, right? And I can see over here, 19, uh, 19 of my trades made it to 60 candles. 
if I go further out, 17 of my trades made it 100 candles. If we go to that 8.2%, only four of my trades actually made it that far. So 8.2% might not be a very reasonable ultimate target, but we can see that this thing kind of flatlines around a 6% gain. We have a little pop here. It comes back into 6%. We have a pop, and then we start to trail off. So maybe 6% is a value that I should be thinking about taking a profit. Right. And maybe that 0.3% is a value that I should be thinking about. Well, maybe I should just stop out below a 3% loss so I can just avoid all of it. And so that's what we do. We just add a stop loss of 0.3. I'm going to check both of these on. I want both of these on. Whenever I'm making strategies, I always want it can exit on the entry candle and after the candle close. And then I add a uh, take profit of 6%. And so we're doing a little bit of curve fitting here, but we're trying to be reasonable with it. We're not trying to like get super, super precise. We're just trying to maximize. That's it. That's all we're trying to do. And so what happens when we add those kind of guardrails, so to speak? Well, our strategy starts performing a lot better. We got a 52% return versus a 27.2% on the asset. If we zoom in to those, those pullbacks, Yes, they are still red trades, but we're stopping out a little bit sooner. They're not going against us as much. Um, and ultimately, our returns are double what they were before. You know, they were 36. Now they're 57. So then my next thought is, well, how can I even make this better? And the way that I think to do it next is I think about time frame. What happens if I change the time frame that I'm trading on? So I try the, the hourly time frame just to kind of play around. Again, I don't use this moving average ever on Apple. I am completely clueless about how this moving average works. I'm just kind of guessing. I'm kind of throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. Well, when we switch it to the hourly time frame, we get this. 751% return versus 176 for the asset on Apple. That's like a 4x return. Now, obviously, it's a bigger time frame, so it's a different style, but we're still, you know, we're still taking quite a few trades. And ultimately, now we're at 4x return versus a 2x return. And so, of course, I'm still thinking, all right, that's pretty darn good. Can I make it better? Let's try a different time frame. I go to the 30-minute time frame and we get this. Now, a little bit less time tested, but like a 7x, right? 153% return versus a 26% return over the same period of time on Apple. So I I share all of this not to like, you know, boast about the strategy, but to just like show you these strategies actually don't have to be all that complex. And this is how you utilize these tools to kind of like you know, just notch it a little bit more in your favor. Now, again, we have all this tabular data. The tabular data is going to tell you essentially if the strategy is worth implementing in the long term. You can learn things like how many positions did you take? What's your win rate? The win rate on this strategy is actually very low. 26% win rate, very, very low win rate. It's just that the risk reward is, um, is enough so that the win rate can be that low. Your max drawdown on the strategy, negative 6% versus a max drawdown on the asset of 32%. So when everybody else is screaming and crying about Apple, you're sitting cozy in your little strategy here. Um, there are ways that this strategy could, or there are things that tabular data can tell you about your strategy that you wouldn't know any other way. So when I open up my watch list, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump through a few tickers here because I want to find this. Now, notice how the win rate here is 24% and there's a red box around it. So tabular data is going to automatically tell you if there are things in your strategy that do not work, that are not sustainable, you'll see something like this where the performance beats the asset and you'll go, oh, it's a winning strategy. But then you come over here and you see your win rate is 24% and you hover over it and it tells you that a risk reward ratio of 3.63, which is what this particular strategy on this particular name on this time frame has, you need at least 26.43% of your trades to be winners in order for this strategy to be sustainable in the long term. So this, we call 
call this no go highlighting. Anytime you see no go highlighting on your strategy, it's just a very big red flag to let you know, hey, that strategy is not sustainable on that name. You've got work to do, play around with it, fix it, make it so that that no go highlighting goes away and you can start implementing it. So we're gonna go back to Apple here. Now we've got this strategy on Apple. It works pretty darn well. We want to implement it. We wanna start utilizing the strategy. Well, how can we do it? There's a couple of different ways. On TrendSpider, you can automatically launch this strategy as a trading bot. So we can open up Launches Trading Bot. You can go to your favorite order uh, routing service. We have one called Signal Stack. Um, there's Traders Post. There's a handful of different ones that you can utilize. I'm not sure if any of you guys are utilizing uh, trading bots, but you grab your uh, webhook from your um, order order routing service, you come over here to webhook, you input your webhook, and you create your bot and you're off to the races. This thing is trading in your accounts without you doing anything. That's wonderful. You can use this as just forward testing. You know, it'll just be signals for your bot uh, or from your bot, right? You can send those signals to your Discord. You see here, I've got a little TrendSpider uh, Tesla bot going on in, in my Discord. So, it's very, very one click, two click, very simple to take this winning strategy that we just made and implement it as a trading bot within just a minute or two. You can also take this strategy and send it along. If you have a friend who is on TrendSpider as well, you can save it and you can share it with a very, very simple link. If any of you guys are TrendSpider users, I'm gonna go ahead and share this with you so that you have it, play around with it, it's fun. Um, there are other ways, though, that you can utilize the contents of this strategy. Let me just go ahead and give you guys this so that you have it. There you go. And uh, when you click on this link, let me show you what you see. For anybody who doesn't, you get this back, the Bigfoot Market Crushing Predictor. Uh, it's just a randomly generated name. We could call it whatever we wanted. All you have to do, log in and import, and it goes straight into your account. It won't go into mine because I just made it, but it will go into yours. Now, uh, it, let's say you don't want to utilize the trading bot, and but you maybe want to utilize these conditions somewhere. On TrendSpider, all of our tools utilize, this is called a visual script, and all of our tools from the scanner to the strategy tester to the multi-factor alerts to your smart checklist, they all utilize visual, visual scripts. You can use, again, GPT conditions to build them. You can manually build them via this add parameter button. There is no coding. It's just click through menus. You can go up to visual scripts here. We have about 800 pre-builts for every major indicator you could think of, every major chart pattern setup. You just type in what you're looking for. Type in VWAP and it's going to give you all of the things all of the pre-built scripts we have for VWAP, VWAP bounce, VWAP decreasing, VWAP increasing, price crossing up, price crossing down, price broke through, all of these things. Um, you can send these scripts everywhere. So I'm, I'm going to do it from the scanner so that you can see it. If I want to, I can come over here and I can uh, save this as a script, right? And then I can send the script. So we'll just use it. I can send uh, a script from my script manager or from my scanner or wherever. I can send it all over the place. Uh, let's do, I don't know, price above year to date VWAP, sure. I can send this to my alerts and I can create an alert for these conditions. I can send it to my strategy tester as an entry condition or as an exit condition. I can send it to my scanner and look for names meeting this criteria right now. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send that condition to my scanner. From here, I just got to pick my scan through list, whatever I want that scan through list to be. Turn on the current candle toggle if you're looking for this occurring right now. Run the scan and you're off to the races. It's going to find every name that's meeting that particular criteria right now. I can do that everywhere we're looking, whether it be in the scanner or whether it be in the strategy tester or it be in the multi-factor alerts or the uh, smart checklist. Let's talk real quickly about the smart checklist because it is a tool that it's it, the way that I look at the smart checklist is like a very, very functional, um, very, very unique indicator. So I'm going to do like example checklist. This is something that I've pre built here. Now, if we scroll very briefly through these conditions, this is a very intense set of conditions. We're looking for green candles across all of these time frames the 5 the 15 the 30 the 65 daily weekly monthly right we're looking for green candles 
Scroll down some more and we are looking for earnings within the next 10 days, dividends within the next 10 days, news since the last 10 days, analyst estimates, reports released within the last 10 days. Scroll down further, inside bars, outside bars, hammers, the 50 SMA greater than the 100, the 100 SMA greater than the 200. Let's pretend that these are all conditions that you need to be true in order to consider taking a trade. Now, these are very intense conditions and I wouldn't expect any of you guys need this but I'm showcasing this just to show you the power of what this thing can do. What it's doing is it's checking the chart that I'm looking at right now for every single one of these conditions. Any condition that true that is true, it's marking a green box next to. Any conditions that's not true, it's marking a red box next to. So you'll see a, a tiered, a staggered approach to these boxes. So there are these individual boxes that refer to all the individual components. There's larger boxes that refer to all of the components being true or not true. And then there's this third farthest outside box that refers to every single condition here being true. So there are tiers, there are levels to this. So think about it like this. I'm gonna add another watch list. As I scroll through my list of symbols that maybe I would want to trade, if you're the type of trader that has five or six or 10 conditions that absolutely have to be true across multiple time frames for you to even consider being long or for you to even consider being short, it may take you five minutes to just pop through all the different time frames and make sure, yeah, it's above the 200 on the hourly. It's below the, RS, uh, the RSI is below 30 on the five minute. It's above its view app on the 15 and the hourly and the daily. Well, you can define all of that stuff here and then just pop through. If you find something that's meeting all the criteria, you get the big green light, you're ready to go, you know you're good. If you have these red bars, you know, all right, there's something that's wrong. And you can decide from there whether or not it's worth kind of uh, foregoing what you're seeing here in the smart checklist or not. Again, you can define that based off of the current candle or the most recently closed candle, completely up to you but that is available as well. So I love this little tool. A lot of our strat traders utilize this for full time frame continuity, that sort of thing. But you know, whatever you might be looking for, you can input as rules in the smart checklist and it can tell you very, very instantly whether or not those rules are being met. Now, one final tool here before we, or maybe two more tools before we uh, get onto questions. I don't want to absolutely overload you guys with too much information over here on the right hand side where you see this little human there is a way to switch through workspaces different accounts sizes offer different amounts of workspaces we also offer multi-symbol view where you can load up up to 16 charts uh 16 unique charts these are all <laughs> bitcoin here um because i just don't have it uh i i should have had this preset for you guys but 16 unique charts you know throw this on one of your screens so that you can monitor all of your favorite names at once we we don't necessarily recommend doing your analysis on this, but you can zoom into charts and kind of look at things very quickly in your multi-symbol view. And then finally, the assistant. The assistant is the other tool that utilizes AI functionality. So GPT is, is plugged into the assistant and it's, it will direct you around the platform. So if you're a new user to the platform, you don't know how to find things. You want to add a VWAP to your chart. All you do, type in VWAP you're gonna get the options of what you can add to your chart. Add an alpha trends anchored VWAP, add a volume weighted average price, add a VWAP with standard deviation bands. I chose the regular VWAP, it adds it to my chart. You can do lots of different things with the assistant or rather from the assistant. So you wanna test a MACD cross on Apple. Type in test MACD cross, select test MACD cross strategy for the current symbol. And it opens up the strategy tester with the MACD cross conditions in it and runs the test. So you can instantly see that. Now, again, Assistant works with our visual scripts of which, again, there are about 800 of these things for just about every condition that you can think of for every major chart pattern and every major indicator that you can think of. So if you have an idea that you're wanting to test or you wanna scan or you wanna, alert, you know, create an alert on something, whatever it may be, you can utilize the assistant. If you want to see all of Apple's earnings, historical earnings, type in Apple earnings, click see recent Apple earnings, and then your list of Apple earnings is going to come up. They do filter from the oldest to the newest. So you just got to flip that there to the newest to get that most up-to-date thing. Let me show you this one other tool and then we'll be done, I promise. And then I'll answer questions. What's happening now? What's happening now is kind of like a mini 
Bloomberg terminal. Um, there are lots of data points inside what's happening now. It's a really cool way of visualizing all of the data that you have access to over here, be it analyst estimates, insiders, uh, unusual options. So if you go to add a feed, you'll see there are a bunch of preset unusual options, uh, selections, spy and QQQ sweeps above a million dollars, sweep calls above the ask, all unusual options, sweep puts below the bid, insider information, CEO buying a stock, a up-to-date list of CEOs buying stocks, an instant up-to-date list of these things. Um, you can have multiple feeds down here. So uh, if you want the spy and the QQQ sweeps, throw them in there. And so you can immediately look at them and know what's going on in an unusual options world. Lots of different ways that you can utilize what's happening now. And again, you can, you can, you can filter it manually um, using this, these three dots here and go into filter and you can type in what specifically you're looking for, or you can do it through the assistant unusual options. Again, um, analyst estimates, insiders, all that sort of stuff. So with that guys, I know that that was a lot. So I'm going to open the floor and, uh, take some questions here. Anybody have anything that they're curious about? I did have one. Yeah, hit me. <laughs> um, is there a way to automate kind of a, similar to GAN fans, kind of a fan line spread from any um, accumulation point in price? Unfortunately, that is not possible. Now, I say it's not possible. We do have uh, custom scripting now. So this is done through JavaScript. We have a handful of different scripts that as they're kind of like example or test scripts that you can pull from. Um, if you go to this little question mark button and go to read docs and knowledge base, and then just type in custom, oops, custom scripting. It's going to bring up this document here. This is a pretty dense little document, but it kind of goes into detail about why we chose Java, different ways to go about writing Java. There are different best practices and these sorts of things. There are examples down here at the bottom that you can pull the JavaScript code from. You just highlight it, copy it, and then bring it over. So I tell you this to say that if there is a GAN script out there um, that's in JavaScript, you can absolutely bring ah. it in here. If there is a, let's say like a Pine script version um you can absolutely make the request down here the the contact us button to me this is kind of an undersold feature of the platform but we actually have live humans in chat every day monday through sunday answering questions and helping people build things and find things and understand how to use tools on the platform these guys are an endless resource that you can access it's free and it's pretty much immediate it's mostly immediate the response time. Um, so take advantage of these guys. You know, if you have something that you want like that, you can always request it. Uh, not everything that gets requested gets built. Obviously, not everything that gets requested can get built instantly. Um, but, you know, everything of interest absolutely gets pushed up to dev. And uh, there are definitely ways that you could go about playing around with it on your own. I've definitely heard of um, some trend spider traders taking a pine script, taking it into chat GPT saying, build this as a JavaScript indicator for me. And then it sometimes will take a bit of iteration, but, um, it's absolutely possible. All of, all of the unique things that traders might be looking for in indicator land, um, are possible via JavaScript. We, in not too long, there's going to be a marketplace as well where you'll be able to, anybody who creates custom scripts will be able to, much like you're used to on TradingView, you'll be able to upload your custom scripts. You can either let people download them or you can sell them um, if, if that's your thing. But yeah, that's that would be where I would uh, initially direct you, Jeremy. Um, yep that's where I would start. And then we could work from there. If it's something super cool, that would be relatively easy. You know, we could pitch it up to dev and maybe they could build it out for us really quick. And then you would have it. Very cool. Yeah, I got some yeah. ideas now. Cool. And then one, one more thing on the, on the AI builder, um, can you tell it multiple things to build or do you have to build them, build them one piece at a time? 
one piece at a time. Okay. And and just so you're aware, at this time, price action conditions and indicator conditions are the limitation there. Okay. Um, so if there's anything that you need it to build that you're not quite certain about, run through visual scripts. You can always, you know, search stuff here, Bollinger Bands, right? And it's going to have a list of all of the different stuff. Um, this is actually a really great, great way to understand how to prompt it. You know, even even us employees, we've we're still learning how to prompt properly. Um, it's it's a whole new learning curve. But the titles of these scripts are your prompts. So if you type in price above upper Bollinger Band, it's going to yield this script for you. Gotcha. Uh, so ju just know that that's kind of like how we're thinking about this and how you would want to go about it on your own. Very cool. That's, yeah. And then you can just add each command at yep. a time. Perfect. Yep. yep. And then, you know, uh, over time, we're going to definitely iterate. This is going to become more functional as, as we become more, you know, uh, as we understand different ways to use it and build it out. But this is a great start for, user or for traders who are new to the platform who don't know anything about scripting don't know where to start but perhaps have some ideas about what they might be looking for what they're trying to do that's me i know what to ask what to make it do i just don't know how to write it <laughs> so yeah. that's gonna be a very useful tool yeah 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 oec can the ai integrated tool comprehend the results from seasonality chart and give answers to queries that's a great question at this time no but i would imagine that that ultimately something will come like that. That would be really, really cool though. Like if you could use AI and say, you know, scan my, my favorite stocks for the best seasonality this month or something. Yeah. Ultimately I have no doubt in my mind that that'll come. I just don't know exactly like where on the roadmap it might be. Very cool. Any other questions? Y'all can feel free to turn on your mics and just ask, or if you want to ask in chat, if anybody has anything. Um, there was a member asking something about it the other day. Um, might have been a it's long the, pricing or right. something like that. Right. I Well, you know, I mean, that would be awesome if you could ask it that. For the now, though, looks like uh, right now. P&G, or PG, rather. That's an interesting little curve. You don't really see this that often where it's like all year, it just gets better and better and better. And then the beginning of the year sucks. So if you're, if you're trying to trade PG, it looks like now's the time to be taking profits. And then you want to be trying to get back in sometime in, in the month of January. Interesting. Very cool. Is there a library of videos somewhere that walks you through how to use each tool? So what we do have available, there are a handful of things. So when when you sign up for TrendSpider, you're going to get a pretty steady stream of videos every day for a period of time that kind of teaches you little bits about the platform. You can also uh, access our YouTube page. If you go to YouTube backslash TrendSpider. Um, Sorry about that. There is the TrendSpider technical analysis series. So the series goes over trading concepts, but there's kind of the hidden piece of, in order to create all these things, I'm utilizing the platform. Uh, so you can kind of watch these and learn little bits here and there from like how I'm utilizing the platform in them. And then uh, we have how to use TrendSpider, all of the system updates and these sorts of things. So uh, to answer your question, yes, um, there is almost always never enough, right? There, there is never, and in, in we have the TrendSpider University too. There's always something that somebody needs to understand but doesn't know how to use, and we don't have an asset to instantly share with them. That's where this contact us button becomes your best friend. Because again, we have live people. I mean, this is Dan. This is our CEO. He even hangs out in chat and answers questions. Um, we have live people in chat Monday through Sunday answering questions. So if you're having trouble with something, you are more than welcome to reach out to us in chat. You can reach out to me on Twitter. I'll give you guys my Twitter handle. I am an open book. I am happy to, you know, answer questions, whatever you might have. You can set up a training session. We offer 30-minute training sessions. Um, 
and you can access those, you know, if you need them um, to speak with uh, one of the guys who lives in chat the rest of the day um, to go over specific questions that you have. But I would definitely take advantage of that contact us button, take advantage of folks like myself who are online all the time and able to kind of push things along and, and help help with understanding as well. Again, very cool stuff. Love the platform. And I've, I've been using it as I can. I've been kind of busy with a lot of uh, teaching too. So, Yeah, uh, totally. And I mean, I understand, you know, it's kind of difficult. I've, I speak to a lot of traders and a lot of traders are just used to what they use. And it's hard right. if, if, if you've lived on TradingView for the past 10 years, it's very difficult to make a switch when you're very comfortable and you know trading is a very fast-paced game especially if you're scalping one minute charts you know like you need to know exactly where all, all your tools are instantly all the time um so you know we totally understand that that's why we have the resources that we have available to, to answer as many questions as we can and you know if if the platform seems interesting to you i just encourage just take a moment and spend some time with it sign up for an account you can sign up for a trial you can almost always request additional trial time if you need it you know we offer a seven day free trial but if you say man i'm really digging the platform but i just haven't quite gotten it yet but i think if i had an extra week or two I, it would really help me just request it call up the guy or holler at the guys and contact us request it they're going to add some additional time they're probably going to offer you like do you do you want to do a little training session again like i say you can reach out to me um we try and make it as as easy and, and navigatable navigatable as possible to get your questions answered in the amount of time in that trial time um and yeah, you know, it's like we say, it's all about having all of the tools at your disposal. We were trying to just make a thing, make a product, make a make a place where you don't have to go looking in five different places for what you're after. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. Absolutely. And then one last thing I wanted to ask, if you got a minute, um, when it comes to like um, FOMC stuff, uh, Fed announcements, speakers, stuff like that, is there a way to implement that? as a way to market on the chart. So I know price action traders, we love to focus on that chart solely. And sometimes we'll forget to go look up, you know, news briefs and stuff like that. Um, would there be a way to transition that to where it would display um, a little uh, indicator on the chart that says, Hey, there's a news event happening at this time. I was just speaking with our head developer about this this morning because I had another fella who requested the exact same thing. So it would be a custom indicator. We would just just have to build it in JavaScript. But yeah, you can utilize those news events. You, you're essentially you would be utilizing data from news, right? And pulling it as a, like a vertical line on your chart. He the the trader I was speaking to was hoping to highlight like the uh, horizontal levels at the highs and lows of the FOMC candle or the non-farm payroll candle or whatever. Right. Um, and again, I think it's just a matter of creating that script. Um, I'm going to talk to our developer a little bit more about it and see if he can kind of walk me through a little bit of the process, because uh, I definitely would like to have that as well. I know how important those days are. I know that they can mark important highs and lows. And um, so, yeah, uh, it's absolutely possible. It just needs to be built. It just needs to be scripted by somebody. Somebody needs to do it. So it's either will our our dev will devote a little bit of time to it or we'll find a script somewhere and we'll transfer it into javascript that'd be just totally awesome because i mean some of us are so drilled in on like the one in five minute charts like we sometimes we'll forget oh there's news coming up we better flatten right. out and wait you know so right. especially as futures traders i mean it's just crazy um you know it'd be great if we had a little little warning like hey you know you can because we're always looking at the chart with the price action in the center of the screen. So like if something would appear to the right saying, Hey, there's something about to happen here at 10 o'clock or, you know, 11 o'clock or something like that. It'd be great to have that on the chart. I agree. So, yeah. That would be awesome. We'll talk about it. We'll see what they can do. Very cool. Thanks, man. Absolutely. As always a great presentation. Uh, you guys are awesome. I do love you guys. And uh, man, there's a lot more useful tools on the platform that uh, I wasn't aware of before that I am now. So yeah. 
puppy. Oh, yeah, you know, we're constantly iterating, constantly adding new new developments. There's even stuff on there now that's been added over the past week that I don't even know yet. Like, I still need to go back and look in our change log and, and get get schooled on some of the newest additions. We just added, like, just little things in our watch list. We just added, um, in this three-dot column, we just added, like, change in value, change since... 52 week high change Sweet. versus 52 week low like these are all new data points that were added this weekend that i don't even know I, I just don't even know about so i need to go in and like learn and figure out exactly what they are and what they mean um but yeah always iterating always adding new things and always open to ideas so if you're on trend spider or you're considering getting on trend spider and the thing and this thing will push you over the edge and say that'll make me a trend spider uh, trader, let us know, you know, holler at us, tell us that. And, you know, we might, we might be able to iterate it very quickly. We might be able to add something for you very quickly that we, we try and be a speedboat in that way, you know, trying to always right. move and maneuver as, as, as quickly as we can. I'm definitely into uh, building a, a fan line script. That'd be epic. That's, that's going to take a yeah. lot of work. I already know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, OEC integration with the broker. Down yes. here, we didn't talk about this. And the reason why we didn't talk about this is because it's not available for everybody yet. But, yes, um, trading direct from TrendSpider is on the very near horizon. Very cool. So these, these are the list. This is the list of brokers currently. I imagine this list is going to grow. Um, it's very much in line with the list of brokers that we uh, integrate with for trading bots as well. But, yeah, uh, it's it's... It's on the very, very near horizon, like, like weeks. Yeah. So OEC, you're not going to see it. Uh, this, I, I have access to this because I'm an employee here. Um, we, <laughs> we have not just dropped this to everybody yet, but the fact that I have access to this means it's very, very close. Uh, this is just kind of like, not, this is, we're past the beta testing piece. This is, this is coming. Uh, it's just, I think, maybe like a week or two or three, maybe away. But it's coming. darn. I was going to ask if it could be a beta. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's going to be. It's going to be available for everybody. And Very it's cool. Gonna link, it'll link through again, whatever order routing engine you use. Awesome. I did see Trade of Eight and uh, a couple others I utilize on that list. So. Yeah, yeah. Trade yeah, of Eight yeah, and Optimus. It's 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 uh it's gonna be a thing, man. Yeah, there's there's a lot of kind of big leaps that are gonna that we're gonna be taking here in a very very short duration of time. Very very cool, impressive as usual, man. This is awesome. You guys are right on the edge of uh, innovation. That's it. That's where we're trying to stay. Way to be. All right, guys. Well, any other questions real quick before we go? If not, I'm going to uh, close this thing out. And uh, again, thank you so much, Jeremy, for hosting us. Thank you all for tuning in and hanging out and being here. We do really appreciate it. Again, don't forget, reach out to us with questions. Doesn't matter if you're on TrendSpider, you're a TrendSpider trader or not, we're still going to answer your question. Um, so hit us up with anything you got. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. Hit me up with anything you got question-wise. And uh, yeah, hopefully, it, hopefully we can get some of you guys using the platform. And if any of you are already on TrendSpider, thank you so much for being being traders with us. We we really really appreciate it. We hope that you love the product. And uh, again, if you have any questions, reach out. We are here to answer those questions. I will get uh, this video uploaded to YouTube here in the next hour or so. And uh, Jeremy, I'll, I'll get Braden to send it over to you guys. Uh, just a private little link. It won't be live on our YouTube channel, but you appreciate guys will be able to share it across Bullish Bears. Across appreciate it. I, I did record it on my end too, but your end might be better. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, right you know, we'll, we'll have it. It'll be there. You can use whichever one you want. Right on. Thanks, sir. All right, y'all. Well, have a great rest of your evening. Trade them well, and uh, we'll talk again soon, hopefully. You too. Again, thanks for your time. Uh, thanks for joining us, and have a wonderful night. All right. Cheers. Cheers.